Hi, I'm Josh Schmidt. I'm one of the instructors for PHE 150, which is the Prevention and Emergency Treatment of Athletic Injuries. You're about to see several videos for taping such as ankle, wrist, some compression wrap, so that it'll help you review during the time of studying that you need for this class. We'll cover these classes, or these tape jobs, excuse me, more in depth as um, the class progresses in the semester. So if you have any further questions, please contact me and have a great semester. This is for a standard ankle tape job that I'm going to show you next. And there's a couple of key things that we need to do when we start this tape job out to have success. The first thing is we always want the athlete with their foot dorsiflexed in this position. The next step, usually we're going to use some type of tape adherent. And the only thing we need to be cautious of this is there are a few people out there that are allergic. So I'm going to spray her ankle, and I'm simulating this right now. I'm going to allow that to dry. The next step that we're going to add is we're going to use a thing called heel and lace pads, and they need to be placed kind of the top of the foot um, and then along the Achilles tendon in the back. And this is just to wear down friction so that they don't get friction blisters and things like that with the tape job, especially if it's a newer athlete that hasn't been taped a lot in the past. After that, our first step or our next step is going to be um, pre-wrap. Pre-wrap is an optional thing, especially an athlete that might have a lot of hair like myself, um, volleyball players, those kinds of athletes usually shave, it's not a big deal. But a lot of times, if you're taping an athlete on a daily basis, it's really important to put pre-wrap on so we don't break the skin down. And so when I start this, um, ideally, I want to be about six inches above the lateral malleolus, or the ankle bone itself. So I want to be nice and high for a good base. There's really no good method um, of pre-wrapping. The biggest key is that we don't want a lot of um, folds over on itself. For example, if I had a twist like this um, on the pre-wrap, it could give blisters down the road. So I want to make sure it lays down nice and smooth and flat. Other than that, that's really about it. Nice and thin. You don't want it really bulky. If you miss a spot and there's a little bit of open skin, it's not critical. All right. When we actually start taping, for, um, for this tape, it's, it's Coach Athletic Tape, inch and a half. There's a lot of different manufacturers. But I always like to have at least one strip of tape directly on the skin for a good anchor. Um, the rest of it can be on the pre-wrap, but I think it's important to have one good strip. So we're going to start with three solid anchors. And the key to doing this is when we lay the tape down, we want it laid halfway overlapping. And I'm going to show you the incorrect way. If I come in here and just lay like this and have a gap, or let's say I kind of am just you know an inch or, or a couple millimeters over, when I lay my next strip down, you can see we're going to have this gap in between here, in between the tape. And when the athlete moves the leg back and forth, especially in these areas of high mobility, that tape can pinch and cause friction blisters down the road. So we want all of this kind of gray lightened area to be closed in solid white. So that's what really important when we're halfway overlapping the tape. So I have my three anchors. The next step or series is what we call stirrups. All right, and stirrups always start inside or medially to outside, which is laterally. And so I'm going to start nice and high on the anchors, come down around the heel of the foot, and up over the lateral malleolus. I'm going to lay the tape down nice and flat, no wrinkles. And then I'm going to integrate these with what we call basket weaves. And so a basket weave starts inside to out. It's just laid down nice and flat, and it helps hold the stirrup down. And I'm going to do a set of three of these, so three stirrups with three basket weaves. While performing my stirrups, I want to make sure that they're nice and fanned out. I don't want to follow the same path as my first one. So I'll do another stirrup, followed by another basket weave, followed by a third stirrup, again kind of lacing this out, fanning it out like this instead of right on top of each other, and a third basket weave. If someone has a little bit larger foot or they have a really long calf, I like to do a fourth basket weave which just helps cut down on friction and blisters in the back. So a minute ago, you were seeing the outside or lateral aspect of the ankle. I just wanted to quickly show you the medial or inside. Again, you can see that my stirrups were kind of fanned out and my basket weaves are nice and flat. The basket weaves don't have to have any structural support. They're just there to hold the stirrups down and make sure that we don't get any blistering um, along the back side of the, the leg and kind of make it nice and symmetrical. So it's really important that they're laid down nice and flat and not pinching or coming up. Now that we've completed our stirrups and basket weaves, the next step is what we call heel locks. 
All right, and this is probably the most tricky aspect of an ankle tape job. Um, when you start this, you want to start right about where you tie your shoelaces on a, on a low cut shoe, not a high top. And you're going to start here. You're going to come down around the heel, underneath, across the back of the Achilles, and ideally, just like this, you want to end your tape just slightly above what we call the lateral malleolus or kind of the outside ankle bone. All right, and you're going to stop, tear the tape, and break it. And now you're going to do the exact opposite on the inside. So again, kind of starting right about where you tie your shoelaces. You're going to come down around the heel, underneath, across the back of the Achilles, laying it nice and flat. And this one's going to end up just like on this side, just above the medial malleolus or the bone on the inside of the ankle. All right? We're going to do, that's one set, and we're going to do a second set of that, um, following and tracing ourselves around just like we did on the first set. So again, around and around. One of the key tips that a lot of students try to make, they try to fight the tape on this and make it go where, where they want it to go rather than just letting the tape roll off on its kind of own direction. And that'll help to not um, pinch up and bind so much. The last two phases are we're just simply going to close the foot and the top of the ankle to kind of keep all this nice pre-wrap down. Um, you always want to try to start outside and work your way in and around. And this helps give a little bit of arch support to the inside of the arch of the foot. And so we're going to bring it around. Depending upon the sport, volleyball players and basketball players like a little bit more support usually on the foot. If it's like a soccer player, a lot of times they don't like this much tape on the foot. So you might want to be a little bit higher. And that's totally fine. This is not a structural component of the ankle. It's just to keep the tape down a little bit and add a little bit of support through the foot. And then we're going to close the top of the foot or the ankle. And we're going to start as low as we can. It's kind of an hourglass figure. So you're going to start here, working up on your angles of tape. So the first one's going to come down nice and low and around. Then the next one's going to be more of a straight piece. And then we're going to work up at a nice angle until we get the entire top half of the tape job closed up. And that's it. You make sure it's all nice and down. I always like to ask the athlete, you know, does it feel comfortable? Is it not too tight? I can always make it tighter at this point or I can snip a little bit on the outside if I need to loosen it up. And then I usually have the athlete relax a little bit and I'll just check for integrity and then we're done.